in my way But me tired of living all my life afraid Push it through trials, make it feel better way Standing up for me Looking into my possibilities Struggling to make my mind be free I'm a stand up and depend on me Alright All praises to the Most High God Hebrew Israelite School of Kings and Priests We got Sister Cesar I'm going to bring out another lesson The lesson is going to be Honor thy mother and thy father This, this is a message to the children So we're going to start off with Matthew chapter 26 and verse 6. Uh, now when Yeshua was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured out on his head as he said at me. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much, and given to the poor. When Yeshia understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath brought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me you have not always. For in that she hath poured out this ointment on my body. She did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. All praises be for the do the Shemai, the Deuteronomy six and four. Shemai Yasharal Ahaya Allah Haya Noah Ahaya Akai. Shemai Yasharala Ahaya Allah Haya Noah Ahaya Akai. Shemai Yasharala Ahaya Allah Haya Noah Ahaya Akai. O oh, hear, O oh, Israel, the Lord thy God is one. Salah. Salah. All oh, praises Israel. Glad to be back. I ask that you have patience with me again. And I'm back with Sister Princess and Sister Trent. And they're helping me today. So we want to go into the honor of our father and our mother. Because... The sisters, the women in Israel, we're having issues. I don't, I don't know about every family, but I do know that a lot of us with our headings and coverings in our homes, um, righteous coverings in our home, um, is out of order, and our kids are out of order. I'm speaking for personal testimony myself, um, and that's one reason why it brought me to this lesson. Because it's so important that we have that spiritual heading and that covering. But I want to start out with um, Titus 2. So that us sisters, we know um, that this is what, this is the order of things. Okay. Titus 2, verse 3. Titus 2, verse 3. The age women likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober and to love their husbands and to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Okay, now we need to go into the next is the first first oh, in Corinthians. Yes, yes. Okay. So first Corinthians eleven and seven. For a man indeed not ought to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and the glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. I see, sisters, is is back to what we were saying about the order. It's the Most High, Christ, man, woman, then children. But when your house is out of order, your family is out of order. The children is out of order. So it's time now to come back to the law, statute, and commandments of the Most High. Get our houses in order. So as we get our houses in order, get our spiritual headings, we can get our children in order. This is the only way we're going to make it out of here, right? Sister. Right. So we want to go into also. Um, Isaiah, yes, please. 
Because we do know that the head of every household is the man, and the head of the man is Christ. So yes. without that order, everything is... Everything is in disarray. It's disarray. wrong. So Isaiah... Isaiah 3 and 12? Yes, Isaiah 3 and 12. Okay. For as my people, children are their oppressors, and the women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy past. Okay. So, that just told us that children are oppressors. And we see that children are running the homes rampant right now. Um, women are ruling over the men that are in the home that are not righteously and therefore if they're trying to rule over the men, most men are just leaving the homes. So it brings back the fact that we need that order to go back the way it should be. We need the spiritual order. We need it more than we ever needed, especially in Israel because we need our prophets out here. And we're raising up women. We're trying to raise men and show men how to uh, be men. men. We, we can't do that. We yeah. can we can teach them the commandments. We can teach them the laws, etc. But we need they need that man. Whenever um they need order or chastising, you know we try as mothers, as women, but it's nothing like that structure from the head. Right. So and that leads me to going into um, Exodus twenty, verse twelve. Okay, Exodus twenty, verse twelve. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. That means is when it says, Honor thy mother and thy father, that thy days may be long upon the land, your life will be long upon the land which the Lord thy God hath given thee. Now, we're going to go to Leviticus 29. All right. Leviticus 29. For everyone that curseth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. Stop. So when it goes into for everyone that cursed, we're going to go into the Hebrew coordinates 7043, which means trifling, vow, etc., despise, curse. Um, it's not to be the same as profanity because it's not what this nation calls cursing. That's not the same thing. But to curse someone is to wish harm or evil upon your parents. And we see that a lot in the homes. Kids hurt like just wishing death and destruction upon their mothers, fathers, grandparents, their, their elders. It's, it's really, it's wicked right now. So it tells you that well, for everyone that cursed his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. Go ahead. He hath cursed his father or his mother. His blood shall be put upon him. Now, when you go into his blood, that's the Hebrew accordance for 1818 18, blood. That which is shed causes death. So when you see it in the scripture and it says his blood, it means death. Death is blood. So I don't know if these kids under, really understand that the most high is not playing. We wonder why our kids getting gunned down, why they killing each other, why they is so much violence against the males with the females and in in the order is all backwards but yet we're not te we're not teaching these kids what this means see they, they have games out there and they teach blood in blood out they understand that that means death it's only one way out is death now if we was teaching them this out of these scriptures they would understand yeah. that to not keep these laws set and commandments in in is death right. it's death so we're gonna go to Deuteronomy 21 18 because it tells us how to fix this. Yes, see, that's the good part. Deuteronomy 21, 18. All right. Deuteronomy 21, 18 through verse 21. If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him, will not her hearken unto them, then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him, and bring him out unto the elders of his city and unto the gate of his place. So, see, before we came here, when we were still in our land, if our kids did not listen after we disciplined them or we chastised them, 
we would take them out to the elders and tell the elders what they did or what they were doing wrong. Go on. And they shall say unto the elders of his city, This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he died. Stop. That he what? That he died. That he died. So we're under grace right now. By being under grace, it's time that we teach them why we got a chance. If we want to save our children, we have to teach our children. Right. If we don't teach them, it's like we're sentencing them to that death. And guess what? That blood will be on our hands because we're going to have to answer for why we didn't teach our children if we knew these laws said your commandments. If we didn't tell them what was going to happen to them for not honoring us. And that's just not for them. That's for us too. If we have parents out there, even right now, that we're not speaking to or we're going through it and we just honoring our parents, that doesn't just reply to our children because we're parents. It replies to us because we got parents. We have to do the same thing. We have to get it right, Israel. Now we're going to go into, yeah, we're going to go to Proverbs 1 to 8. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So like it, so like it. Go back. Mm -hmm. It was still one. I want you to finish that. Okay. Okay, so. It was at 21, 21, mm -hmm. and go down there was at the first. So, so shall. Yeah. So shut up. All right. So on Deuteronomy verse 21, it says, And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he died. So shalt thou put evil away from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. Now, the reason why they did that, it made an example of you. That was an example. If you disobeyed your parent, they brought you out to them elders, they stoned you, they killed you, tossed you over, and made sure that everybody saw that, that you knew you do not disrespect or dishonor your parents. Because if there was one bad seed in Israel, they was not going to have their children around that. For sin to be set there for the Most High, to, to bring vengeance upon our head for what that child, disobedient child, your parents are going up to, because nobody wants that vengeance from the Most High upon their head. So... I just also like it. Um, I asked y'all that patience with me. I just wanted to finish that out. Now we're gonna go to Proverbs one eight. Proverbs one eight. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law, or thy mother. Stop. Now it says, my my son. Proverbs one eight. My son, hear the instruction of thy father. The father is the most high, and forsake not the law of thy mother, which is the Holy Spirit, the way we walk. Okay. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. Now when it says an ornament of grace, that's that's proudness. Where they getting old, they, they when your hair gray, that's like a crown of, of, of grace upon your head. That's that means that you grew up, you actually lived a life. And the only way to live that life and, and bring respect the honor as if you do these things to obey the most high in his commandments and do what he says. Now we go we're gonna go over to Proverbs 4 1 so that you can understand that. Alright. Proverbs 4 verse 1 Hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. Bring it back again. Hear ye children the instructions of a father and attend to no understanding. Okay. So hear ye children. Hear ye children, where is it? Okay. The instructions of that father. Mm -hmm. That's the most high. And attend to mm -hmm. no understanding. We have to give them understanding and have understanding ourselves on what this means. We have to hearken to the Most High. Come back to His law, statutes, commandments. I'm so tired of turning on the TV, seeing our kids dying out there, seeing the police chasing them, chewing them down. That's what kind of made me want to do this video. So I, I know I'm coming off course for the scripture, but I can go back to that. 
It's just the fact that every time I got to explain to my son why I don't want him walking to the store that's three blocks down. Or I don't want him hanging out with friends. Or I don't want my son, who was 22, to, I worry for him to go from here to his sister house, which is only six blocks away, because he is a, what this nation calls, black man. I have to worry about that. Because I don't know if he's going to make it home. Every time I send my 17-year-old, I had to tell my son, you got two strikes at birth. One is that you're black and two is that you're a male. And that's sad. But if we could teach our kids these laws and statutes and commandments, and they come under, they would not have to be out there running from anybody. Right. They would never have to go through that. When you don't know better, then... I, I mean, it's excusable in a sense, but when you know better, you do better. And now, it's no excuse now that the most time sent truth down for us not to be teaching our kids. I know it's hard. It's hard for all of us. Yeah. Imagine how hard it is for imagine how hard it is for these kids who don't have the understanding right. or don't see how we can see right now. Right. I go through it all the time with my kids because they can't see through spiritual eyes what I see. Right. I want them to see it so badly, but yet that's the will of the most high if they can or they can't. Exactly, but that's why that's why it's our job to give them the tools they need from as little as you know little as bring as them up so that when they go out into this world, you know, they're they, they they're prepared to fight against the evil that come in their way and they can recognize yes. it. You come, know what I'm saying? Come. So so we don't need to have that fear if we instill in these this doctrine into our children. It would need to have a fear because he didn't give us a spirit of fear. You know what I'm saying? No. So, but you will be fearful because of the unknown. But if you knew you were prince, you knew that you had laws, statutes, and commandments to live by, and that ain't nothing to touch you once you follow in these laws and statutes, then, you know. Then you would never have to walk in fear. Exactly. And that's the thing. And we wouldn't have to worry about our kids making it home. Right. Because just because we're striving, and so that's another thing to understand. A lot of us parents, and we strive for obedience because we know that covers our children. So if you're being obedient, that also covers your children. See, this goes so far, which they don't understand. Obedience is the key. So even without our spiritual head, if we're striving to be obedient, that's protecting our kids and our kids' kids and for generations on through to thousands of generations of, of, of those that love him. Of those that love and keep his commandments. Because right. to love him is to keep his commandments. Right. So we're going to go into Proverbs 23, 22. Right. Proverbs 23, verse 22. Hearken unto thy father that begot thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. And that's the precept to what we just did in Proverbs 1, 8. If I'm mistaken, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. And that's, again, saying that, hearken unto thy father, which is the most high, and begot not. And that begot thee was because of the most high that we're here. See, he may have, he may have, we may have birthed you and brought you in uh, physically into this world, but we all belong to him. And he gave these laws and statutes and commandments unto Israel. Twelve tribes. Yeah. One nation. We have to come back together and you do know, this the right way. It's, it's great because like a lot of us will walk around and just wondering why are we living like what are we here for we just living together. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So when you know you have purpose, it just changes the, it whole, changes your the whole perspective of life. Because yes. you're born for a reason, not just in vain. You wasn't born in vain. Oh praises. You know? Oh praises. And that's important because when we try to tell our kids in Israel, I don't think any other kids got it harder than the kids in Israel right now that's in depression. They don't even know why they're going through what they're going right. through. And that's the, you know, I used to ask myself all the time, why do we got to go through this? Right. But now I know, so it gives me that joy of, oh, I see why we got to go through this. I'm good now. Just bring it on. I just got to go through right. it. But it's, it's when sad. they don't understand it's it. It's sad because we think that. That we we've been going through this for so long. It's like the norm. Yes, yes. You know, to keep fighting for equality, fighting for, for rights that we should have. You know, we didn't fight each other. Fighting each other. But why? Why is it happening primarily to this nation of people? You know, 
And that's right. when we start to teach them why. Because yeah. our ancestors walked away from the right. statues of cutting out that's of the most high. Right. Right. And how do we get it back? We go back to the most high. He's calling his people. He's calling his people back. So it's time for us to go back. We have to go back as a nation and we have to teach our children. Imagine these group of kids that's growing up right now, that's being born, that's going to be born. They don't have to live under paganism, the lies. They get to be born in this truth, grow up in this word, yeah. with the understanding of how to to cover themselves right. and who they are in the truth of who they are, right. who they have their identity back. Something that we weren't given. And again, it starts with the. And parents. it starts and it starts at home. It starts, it starts with home. us. So we have to be parents. That's you right. Can be, you can't be a friend. Your child. You can't have a TV raising your kids. Parents. We have to actually do some hands on raising your children. And um, spanking them as well. Yeah. Spare the rods for the child. I would like to go back to Ephesians 6 1. Ephesians 6 and 1. Ephesians 6 and 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy mother and thy father, which is the first commandment, with promise. Stop. Now, did you see that? This is the honor thy mother and the honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise. Right. So that's not just talking to the children. That's talking to all of us because we all are the most high children. So we have to honor. We have to honor. Yeah. Verse 3, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. That we may have long life. Right. See? Because we're going to go out there using our own mind, thinking our own ways, and not with any, what we call in the islands, brotopsy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, you know, structure. Yeah. Right? So it has More to start of, at home. It, it has, has to, to start, start at home. home. And the great thing, again, is with this truth, it gives them self-esteem, pride of in who they are. They don't have to guess it. They know when they walk out this door, you are from what tribe they're from, who they are, who their ancestors were. We didn't have that. We didn't have it. They don't have to be a byword. They know who they are. So that's going to give them a sense of pride. So then the mother nations, when they come up against them, they're not going to back down from that. But they also know that their God is protecting them because they are walking in those laws, statutes, and commandments. And a byword is, you know, being like called anything up. else but what we but are. But who we are. Black, Caribbean. We can't be all those things. We can't be two continents. We can't be the, uh, you know, uh, it's just, it's, come on, Israel. We have to start really using our brain cells because they're dying out from being dumbed down. Yeah, everyone else. And it's the truth. Yeah. We just been dumbed down. It's time to wake up. Yeah, everyone else, every other nation has their own language, their own culture, their own land. And they laugh at us. We spend more of our money in there with these other nations with it, than with our own. Do you know we would complain about going to buy from our own people? But that's part of the and, and it's part, Yeah, and it's just, but that's why we have to come back right. because we are our biggest enemy right now. Right. We are our biggest enemy. We worried about those nations. We need to be worried about ourselves coming back, our our own people, us coming back to each other in love. Well, I mean, because it starts at home, and we have to do it. That's right. The same Bible we're running from is the same book that showing us how. <laughs> yeah, but that but that's that's another video, I guess, because you know they say you want to keep something from so-called blacks. You want. <laughs> Put it in a book because mm -hmm. you don't like to read. Put it in a book because you don't like to read. But you have to ask yourself, why, why, why did your oppressors introduce a doctrine to you, but then they didn't want you to read the book they were preaching out of? Why did they want you to read it for so long? But you have to also realize that the most high put the spirit of sleep upon people. Mm -hmm. It wasn't time. No, but you had some people that was that still some. read it and woke up. But it, it wasn't meant for us to wake up. It was meant for us to wake up as a nation. Not but as again, nation. I'm just saying, just ask yourself these questions because as you have a lot of children out there that will say, "Well, I don't want to read the Bible because it was get, it was written by it this man." That's what they or, say. You know, yeah. so and so. 
but just read it for yourself because again they will you know but they go to school and they'll read those books that they give them in there and tell them that that's their history uh, mm. right, right but this right. book but this book right here has the history from the beginning to the end right but but they'll go to school and read with some other man so a man wrote this is an inspired word of the most high it, but they'll go to school right. and be indoctrinated with the lies that they're teaching them there. Okay, that's smart. So this is why we have to start teaching our own children at home right. first. So even if we have to send them out, they're not they're not digesting the lies yeah, that yeah, they're yeah. teaching them. Yeah, they can identify it. Exactly, they'll be able to know. So we're going to go from there into Ephesians. Wait, no, no, you're done with Ephesians 6? Yep, one, two, three. Okay. Okay, Colossians 3 20. Colossians 3 and 20. Children obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing to the Lord. For this is well pleasing to the Lord. Now, if you don't want to please anybody else, you should want to please Him. Because your parents want <laughs> the best for you. Your parents really do want the best for you, you know? So. We really should be listening to them more. <laughs> and, and with that being said, we have to do some self-examination. Because mm -hmm. realize we've all been under oppression. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 we've been taught by our presence how to raise our kids. And those that didn't have the word or have that understanding of the law, such as commandments. I, you know, I look back now and I, I understand more than what I ever did. I don't complain about how I grew up in my life. Because now I understand they were under oppression. How can I complain about the life I'm grateful for whatever they did for me? Because considering the circumstances that we had to be raised under. So with that being said, yeah. I self-examined myself. I'm not, you know, the most high will humble me in a way that I know I can go and say, well, you know what, I'm sorry. I got to look at this a different way. For I came at you this way before I knew this or that. Because now I got kids this, you know, what well, you let us do this. Well, that's before I was in the truth that had really understood, you know, what I understand now. So now I can't do it this way which they don't understand it, but I understand. And it's all for love. It's because we love them mm -hmm. and we want them to understand right, and, right. and be chasing. Right. And um, with that being said, I'd like to thank you, Israel, for your time. And hopefully see you soon. I'd like to have an end prayer. Psalm 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Most High, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall I trust his truth. Mm -hmm. shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fly, fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy, at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Most High, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habita habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and, and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show my salvation. So, 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 so. All praise to the Most High for another lesson. Uh, children are the not parents. Hebrew Israelite school of kings and priests. Kwame Yisrael.
Kwam Yesharala. Still I try to be all that I want to Know that I got to stay in the light The most high make a way for me Didn't hear with way too much See was a problem, problem In my life I seen enough I hit the bottom, bottom but still it's alright I'm living my life Doing what I can, take it one day at a time I 